I'm Governor Jesse Ventura, and this is The Alex Jones Show. Well, I'm here with uh, former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura. He has his new TV show coming up in the winter and into the new year. And uh, we're discussing some of the current events that are happening right now in our world. Jesse, great to see you again. Good to see you as always, Alex. It's a pleasure. My pleasure. You're looking good, Governor. I hear you've been working out a bunch. I'm training hard. You know, i got to get ready for another season of surfing down in Mexico. And at my age, you better be in shape because the waves have no mercy. <laughs> You're also enjoying watching the uh, Vikings. They're doing well, and I'll tell you what, it's, it makes all us old guys feel good, doesn't it, when you see a 40-year-old Brett Favre out there with still a cannon arm. So it's fun up in Minnesota right now, you know, with the baseball playoffs and everything going on. Sports-wise, it's a good time, but I know we're here to talk about other issues, not just happy sports stuff. <laughs> yeah, because last time we talked, you pointed out people should stop just caring about sports and yep. care a little bit about um, events. When I talked to you about a year ago, in fact, it was in October last year, you said even in the campaign, you weren't supporting McCain, but that he was already going back on promises. Now looking at Obama, uh, 11 months into his administration, uh, are you happy with him? Well, you know, I'm, I'm never, I don't think, ever happy with Democrats and Republicans. I don't think I can ever tell you that I'm pleased with what they do because you know my position very strongly. I think that the two major parties are the problem, not the solution. And we as a country have to eliminate them. We have to eliminate the Democratic and Republican parties and go back to what George Washington, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson wanted in this country. And that was people, and, and the reason is this, Alex, and you see it clear today. When those two groups take votes, right, they put their party before the country. Votes are done for their party. Votes are not done to better the country. Now, President Obama, let's remember, he inherited a mess. I wouldn't have wished it on my worst enemy. How is he doing? I think he's doing okay. You know, there's a lot of controversy about him winning the Nobel Peace Prize and did he earn it or not? And, and has it now destroyed what the Nobel Peace Prize stood for because they gave it to Obama? No. And I'll tell you why. If they can give the Nobel Prize for Peace to Henry Kissinger at the moment that he's carpet bombing secretly Cambodia and killing hundreds of thousands of people, I would say it was back then that the prize lost its luster, you know, when Henry Kissinger won it. Now, did Obama deserve it? I don't know. But I think that as a country, we shouldn't chastise him for getting, and I think we ought to feel good about it that he, he won an award. No different than if Michael Phelps wins a gold medal internationally. It's our country winning sure, something. Sure, sure, but going back, even last year, you were critical of him flip-flopping on the war. Oh, now, yeah. now he's increased troops in Afghanistan. Or he, the potential to increase troops. He's making that decision. as Well, well he increased them some. Now he's making the decision for even more. Yep. No, and I disagree with that. I, you know, my position would be we should pull out of Iraq and Afghanistan, is my view. And I'll go a step farther. I think we should pull in all our troops around the world. Well, it's enough. Yeah, well, why are we the only country that has bases and troops in, what, 170-some different countries? Since when are we the policemen of the world? And if we're going to be, let's get paid for it. Sure. I mean, my issue is I was against George Bush because I knew he had a globalist agenda. Obama, you talk about Henry Kissinger, he thanked Henry Kissinger when he was sworn in, uh, Obama, as the first U.S. president to be the head of the U.N. Security Council. It has all the power. Uh, that really violates uh, one of the sections of the Constitution for him to be swearing an oath. You, and you know what I think it does, Alex? It proves my point. There's no difference between the two parties. The agenda's the same between these two parties. Well, no, no, I agree with you, Governor, yeah. but that's what I'm saying is that I didn't like Bush, I don't like Obama because they are front men, and instead everybody fights over who they support, I just want to get past that point, and does it creep you out to know that Henry Kissinger is one of his top advisors, and, then when, and that when he was sworn in as the head of the Security Council at the UN, he thanked Henry Kissinger? I mean, this is Mr. New World Order. Yeah, yeah that concerns me. They've run the system, the whole economic system of the world for the last two and a half hundred years. So why shouldn't they also run the economic system for the next few hundred years? So is this some sort of a new world order, which, which Gordon well, Brown kind of alluded to? I think a new world order is emerging. We have to stand up to preserve 
a republic here and a rule of law, which is under dire threat. For a couple of hours, you could say Mr. Obama was yes, president of the I world. Mean. Obama has made it quite clear by his actions, never mind his words, his actions, as to who owns him, who, who he works for, and who he serves, and it's not the American people. Just as George W. Bush betrayed his foolish followers, so must Obama, because his only allegiance is to his offshore masters. Summers tells Obama what to do, Summers tells Geithner what to do. So we had Snow, we had Paulson, now we have Geithner. All these people cut from the same bowl of cloth. All you folks don't even realize that you're helping people that you're associated with, and you should be recusing yourself. Uh, I, uh, you know, I behaved with the... Uh, you don't the think you should have recused yourself? Every time in history when a group of banks in conjunction with the government was given the power to expand the money supply at will, those economic systems always collapsed. If they make a mistake, they get bailed out. If everyone else makes a mistake, they get put in jail, call the terrorists. The tune of $23,700,000,000 worth of taxpayer exposure for the bailouts is quite striking. This is by probably an order of magnitude the biggest fraud in history. Why would you need international bankers? Why would any government agree to, to use them? It's nothing more than a private, hostile, corporate takeover of every sovereign nation on Earth. So for the first time in history, we really have this new form of an empire. Fall of the Republic. Volume 1, The Presidency of Barack Obama. Available on DVD at InfoWars.com and online at PrisonPlanet.tv. The destiny of humanity is in our hands. October 21st, 2009.